Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. That last week, when President Nawakwi was admitted in hospital. He sent police officers to try and go and arrest Nawakwi from a hospital bed. And he tried to take the doctor to say, this is unacceptable. And they told the doctor, then give us a medical report that she's sick. Somebody who is in bed, you want them to, the doctor had to write a medical report to avoid Nawakwi being pulled out from the hospital bed. And you, you think, what you are doing is correct. You are a star today, Ukadila. Uh, let's get to the, the issue that you talked about, the, the, the first answer that you gave me when I asked you how you were. You hinted on the cost of living. Uh, this is an ongoing discussion on a number of, of platforms. Yes, government has given a say on what they are doing and the reason why we're in this uh, uh, state. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking uh, answers. The if, reason, you, if, you, if you were, let me if, tell you. if you were a president leading this country, and there's this talk of cost of living, how would you handle let it? Me tell what you. are some of the answers that you would uh, seek to find? Let me tell you mm. something for nothing. Government must take full responsibility mm. for the cost of living. Government must take full responsibility for the cost of living. Mm -hmm. And if government want to blame other people for the cost of living, they are being unfair. Today we are grappling with the high cost of living because of the IM conditions. Sure. Government today wants to boast that PF failed, eh? mm -hmm. failed to conclude the uh, IMF uh, 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 deal. We didn't fail because we wanted to fail. We, we didn't conclude the IMF because we were against certain conditions that the IMF wanted us to meet, which were unfavorable mm -hmm. to the people of Zambia. And what are these conditions? One, they told us not to, uh, to uh, subsidize electricity. They told us not to subsidize uh, fuel. They told us not to subsidize agriculture. Three things. Now, if you don't subsidize fuel in a country where 70% of the population lives below the, uh, the, the, the poverty datum line, mm -hmm. where 70% of the population are unemployed, then you are killing the poor people. Minister of Finance at that time were young and refused and continued engaging the IMF to lessen some of the conditions that they wanted, which this government has accepted. Look at the jump of the fuel price from 17 kwacha when PF was in office, because PF was subsidizing the fuel. Now, because they've removed the subsidies, the fuel today is about 30 kwacha per liter. Now, when fuel goes 30 kwacha per liter, mm -hmm. fuel, 27, I'm, I'm saying about, mm -hmm. it, it was just about 29, almost 30. It reduced uh, politically by two kwacha just a month ago. Mm -hmm. And the argument is that PF as well didn't find fuel at 17. It was less than that when you assumed office in the year 2011. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The cost of fuel does go up. But obviously, when you have a, a component of subsidy, you do reduce it sure. because you want the poor people to survive. By the way, politics is not, you cannot run a country purely on business principles because business principles is about making a profit. But when you are running a country, is to balance the living standards of the poor people and the rich people. Now, when you want to apply business principles purely in the running of government, 
the poor people will always be enjoying while the, I mean, the rich people will always be enjoying while the poor people will suffer. And the gap between the poor and the rich people will widen up, which is happening now. The policies that our friends are, uh, are espousing under the conditions of the IMF favors the rich people and are very unfavorable to the poor people. In any case, the majority of our people are poor. Mm -hmm. So this government, when accepting certain conditions of the IMF, should have put into consideration the poor people. But they don't consider the poor people. They don't like the poor people. They are telling you the fuel prices are. Eh? Ministers are fuel is bought for them. They don't buy fuel. Permanent secretary fuel is bought for them. Those are the people that are making decisions. But how about a poor teacher who has to earn about 6,000 kwacha a month, rent a house for about 4,000, he has to feed his family, he has to clothe his family, 6,000 is not enough. So how do you help that teacher? Subsidize fuel, subsidize uh, 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 agriculture so that you can produce more to reduce the cost of food. But our friends have done away with subsidies. They have increased the cost of uh, fuel, increasing the cost of doing business. As a result, the living conditions of the people have deteriorated because we have high price of uh, commodities. So to blame anybody, they should blame themselves, the IMF. Now the same IMF, after inflicting so much pain and suffering on the people of Zambia are now reluctant to even release the $180 million that they are supposed to, to, to release, saying until the debt crisis is resolved. Yes, we appreciate that uh, one of the conditions of the IMF was that uh, the, there should be some debt relief. But the country that is owed so much money is China. Our current president has taken a decision to, fa to I mean, to, to, to kind of uh, incline more to the Western world, mm -hmm. the Americans and the Europeans, and to some extent discard China. And yet China is the one who is owed a lot of money in terms of, uh, uh, you know, this debt. Now, the Americans are telling the Chinese, give debt relief to Zambia and other African countries. But they don't want their institutions, like the IMF, like the World Bank, to also give a debt relief, saying, no, our loans are concessional, the rates are too low, already we've given a concession, so you are the ones who are going to give concession. China is saying, look, if we have to give debt relief, all of us collectively must give debt relief. And yet our president has been in power for close to two years, he has never gone to China. When everybody, all African countries, are getting relief and going to China, he has decided to fight the Chinese for a better, of a, for a, for a lack of a better term, and side with the Western world. Now, as long as he doesn't want to bring the Chinese closer to us, mm -hmm. this date restructuring will not work. As, as former uh, minister in the foreign affairs, uh, when you say Zambia is choosing a country to associate itself with, and don't, don't you think now you're, you, you're almost creating some level of diplomatic uh, negative energy? The problem with Chishimba Kambuidi is that I say things as they are. Mm -hmm. I don't massage situations. Zambia has always been a non- aligned country sure. when it comes to voting at the UN on major uh, uh, policy issues. We have always been non-aligned. If the big powers or the superpowers are fighting, Zambia will abstain from the vote. For the first time from the Kaunda time, Zambia voted against Russia at the UN. Now, you know what Russia has done for Zambia. 
Most of the uh, military equipment that we have is from Russia. We have so many people have been sponsored by Russia, and a lot of programs that the Russians have done. Just as much as the Americans have done a lot for us, and just as much as the uh, Chinese have done a, a, a lot for us. Now, to balance up, don't get in the fights that do not involve you. And, and the president has been clear about it. I'm telling you that this president does not do what he says. He says one thing and does the other. If he means what he says, why hasn't he been to China? Why hasn't he been to China? You, you said, you, you told us that China, you listen, to him, didn't Musoko you Tuane, mm -hmm. Musoko Tuane, China has done so much for us in the last uh, four, five, five years. In the last 10 years, China came into Africa to work with the African countries and put up a lot of money to try and help the Africans in terms of infrastructure development. And Zambia has benefited a great deal from this. But imagine our president, almost two years in government, has been to America, if I'm not mistaken, about three, four times. And he has not been to China. And at the moment, the people who've got, even the, the Americans borrow from China. But the Americans want to tell you not to have a, a, a healthy relationship with China, and yet they borrow from China. So our president must be very careful, extremely careful, and balance the equation. Otherwise, in my language, they say, Apple will ensofu, ichichuli la mochan. And in this equation of America and, the, and the China, Russia, if we tuli chani. But abu tukale telela, in our decisions as a government, is the ordinary people. And we must be very, very careful. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Mpondo. I love you, peace. I gotta go.